Mr. Michael, you may call me Alex. I'm one of the creators of Open Innovation Lab. Open Innovation Lab is a, a community in CSK that promotes open culture, open technology, and open data. And we have a workshop like this regularly, uh, every night of Friday. So and to, in today, we are honored to have one of another Open Innovation Lab creator, Carson Ip, to hold this workshop and to introduce about your man, Grant and Grant. And Carson is uh, a year three computer science student in Studio K that has uh, PhD work in IPSC and NetDragon uh, for web development. So uh, he is currently an uh, open source director now. So uh, if you have any question about his background, you may ask him after the workshop. Uh, so uh, let's Carson kickstart the workshop today. Okay, hello everyone, I'm Carson. So uh, today we're going to talk about Yeoman, Grunt, and Gump. Uh, so this will be a very brief introduction to Yeoman, Grunt, and Gump. You will know how to uh, install it and use them to boost your productivity. So why do we need them? So that's a basic problem that every web developer has. Uh, we want to start writing a web app. So where should we start? Uh, do we have to consider about consider the folder structure and start every file from scratch, like uh, writing doc type, HTML scripts, uh, links to CSS and then body, uh, and so so on and so forth. So it's very troublesome and time consuming to do so. It's not productive at all, especially in the hackathons or uh, you are close to a deadline. You don't want to spend time writing meaningless code. So we have some solutions here. So one of the solutions is uh, seed projects like HTML5 boilerplate. It's a front-end template that already have uh, already have the website working out of the box. So it also has some styles and uh, uh, modernizer jQuery setup for you. So it's a good way to start your project. And another way is also see projects for Angular this time. So we have this Angular seed as the seed for Angular JS apps. So you basically need to clone the repository and install the dependencies and boom it's working. So this uh, one of the solutions but we have some more problems now. What if we want to use ES6, the new JavaScript or CoffeeScript or TypeScript or SAS? So some great stuff that you like, but it's not available uh, when you use those seed projects. So uh, with these tools, we also have to set it up. Uh, we have to set up how to compile it and uh, and also of stuff. And what if we want to customize? If the seed project use Bootstrap, but you want to use Material Design Foundation, uh, so it lacks customization. So we have our solution here, Yoman. So Yoman is the scaffolding tool for modern web apps. It helps you to kickstart new projects and uh, prescribing best practices and tools that help you stay productive. So we'll talk about the tools later. Let's visit this uh, page. So here's your man, uh, this man, yeah. It, uh, it consists of your 
run scope and power npm to to uh, to to make this happen to uh, let you kickstart your app uh, very quickly. So what this basically does is uh, it provides generators to generate a working web app out of the box. So it has all the photo structure and architecture uh, there. So you can start uh, modifying it and get it working. So especially in hackathons when you need to start a, a web or web app, uh, you can just use Yoman and boom it. The, the web app is working in a, a, a few minutes. So this boosts the productivity. But now we have even more problems. So for example, when we use CoffeeScript, we have to compile it every time. So do we have to manually compile everything? And if you are test, if you like test-driven uh, development, so do we have to do the manual testing? And for production, we have to. We usually like to have our scripts and HTML, CSS, all concatenated and uh, minified. So do we have to do this manually? Do we need to learn all those commands and type it in the terminal? And Another problem is when we when we have, uh, for example, we have CoffeeScript. When we write CoffeeScript, we have to compile it into a JavaScript and then reload the web page. This is quite troublesome if you do it manually. So, do we have to refresh our web page after every modification? Now we here comes the solution. Uh, we have runs here. Grunt is the JavaScript task runner. It provides automation um, such as minification, compilation, unit testing, and linting. And it has 4, 000, more than 4,000 plugins uh, to power these uh, features. So, uh, how how it knows what to do is through the grunt file. So we can see check out the gruntjs.com and oh, and here's the here's the link to the PowerPoint in case you you want it. So grunt is the JavaScript task runner, and what it does is is explained here. So everything is automated. You don't have to compile it and do the minification manually. So just install it and have the grunt file ready. And when you type the command grunt something, it will do all the things for you. So we have the second solution, which is Gulp. So Gulp is a newer tool. Uh, so it is the better grunt. It uses code over configuration. We'll talk about it later. So it makes use of node streams. So there will be no intermediary in intermediary files. So it will be faster because for grunt. Uh, after every task, it will save the uh, temporary files to the disk and then read it later. For Gulp, we use node streams. So it has more than a thousand plugins and it uses Gulp file, which is uh, like run file. It is uh, a file with all the code inside to power this tool to tell what each task does. So, Here's the home page for Gulp.js. It says automate and enhance your workflow. And here's the plugins, which uh, gives 
gulp the functionality because gulp actually is just a, a, a tool that run the task it doesn't know everything like grunt so they need plugins and no different node modules to to give it the functionality so we'll talk about grunt file and gulp file later so when we compare grunt and gulp grunt versus gulp we can see on the left it's a grunt it's a grunt file and on the right it's a gulp file so we can see in the grunt file uh, it is a configuration configuration it shows the configuration in a JSON format so when you need to modify it you need to change the JSON but it doesn't look very readable so when when the grunt file become large, it is quite hard to handle. Uh, on the right side, we have gulp, and it is uh, code. It's like code. It's just for developers, for programmers. This is easier to read and easier to maintain. Just pipe everything, so the result of the first of the the one before the pipe pass to the next one. So when we have time, we'll talk about uh, what it does. So when we have Yeoman, uh, every Yeoman generator usually already choose a grunt or gulp to 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 uh, with the project. So everything is ready when you use your man to generate a project uh, you can die, you can immediately use grunts and gulp functionalities so uh, one point to note is that uh, it's usually grunt yeoman yeoman projects are usually grunt so uh, if it doesn't mention it use gulp it is using grunt. So we have Angular project and, and gulp Angular project. We have Ionic and Ionic gulp. So uh, you can we can check it later. So it's time for uh, getting our hands dirty and trying to use Yeoman and gulp. So make sure you have the, the Wi-Fi set up. Uh, you, you can connect to the internet so we can start we can start uh, to try the yeoman and go so anyone have problems with the wi-fi uh, if no we'll start so meanwhile uh, i will pass a tablet uh, so the tablet will uh, a Google form, so it's a new kind of registration form. So you just fill in your data, and there is an extra field compared to previous workshop. There is an extra field that if you feel like that uh, this time slot is not convenient for you, you can suggest an uh, alternative time slot, or you feel that Friday night is already the best time slot, you can just fill in Friday night in the last slot. So uh, it's so hands on. Uh, first of all, we need Node.js installed. I forgot to put down the installation uh, instructions. So just click into this link. It tells you how to set up. And uh, for for operating system other than Linux, you can choose your own system here. Or you can use your packet manager, package manager. So everyone please have Node.js installed. Uh, 
if you have problems, please raise up your hand and uh, we'll have damage or Rokai help you. So one more reminder, uh, here's, the, here's the link to the PowerPoint, so it's, it will be easier to follow the links and the commands if you have the PowerPoint with you. So now we have to download and install Node.js in your system uh, in order to use the Yeoman, Grunt, and Gawk, because all of them are inside the NPM. So, anyone already has Node.js install here. Yeah. Node.js, so please help the your neighbor if they don't. <laughs> so who's still installing? Who who have problems? If no, we'll move on. Uh, after Node.js, we have to install Yo, which stands for Yeoman, and run CLI, Gout, and Bower. So, simply type the command below. You probably have to use sudo to have all these tools installed globally in your system. So in case you don't know, um, Bower is, uh, is something like a dependency manager. Which installs all the dependencies for your web app. So it may take some time to install this. So who already have all of these installed? Nice. So help your neighbors if they don't. Please help uh, 
participants who don't know how, how to do it. So after installing all of these, uh, we'll try out Generator Gov Angular, which is one of my favorites. So here's the repository for this generator. It's a Yeoman generator, which generates AngularJS web app with Gov. So here we see this Yeoman. And what we have to do now is install this generator globally and then invoke it. So we have to use npm install mysg uh, generator gulp angular which will may also require to do. So anyone have some difficulties or problems?
this is a uh, NPM installer, which allows you to install multiple NPM version. You can install it using Postgres, then installing the library. Just type N with four point two three nine three nine. So install N first, and then use N from two. So for those who don't have problems, uh, we can start using the generator. We create a folder called web, your project name, then uh, CD web, go inside the directory, then go yoho. Angular. So what this does is just tell Yeoman to run this Gulp Angular generator. It will take some time, like five to ten minutes. And since we share the Wi-Fi, so maybe we'll need half an hour. So uh, just try this. It tells you. It it asks you for uh, many. It asks you for many options. What do you want? For example, which version of Angular? Uh, we want 1.4. And then Angular modules, jQuery. If you don't know what it is, just press Enter. <laughs> so, UI router. And here, which UI framework do you want? Maybe you care about this most. It, it defines the, the, the look of it. Bootstrap, the old school, old school uh, style. Material design, foundation. So, maybe Bootstrap. And whatever. So, CSS preprocessor, maybe you want SAS or you want the old good CSS, whatever. And JavaScript, ES6, TypeScript. So after choosing what you want, it will take a lot of time for it to install all of these. So yeah, let's let's just try installing it. here is all the files with a gut file. So let's check if everyone have have, uh, have a successful journey with Yeoman. This is the result of 
So in Yeoman, there's many generators that you can use. If you don't like AngularJS, maybe you are uh, AmberJS or, or ReactJS or Node.js, MongoDB, Programmer. So here we, you have AngularJS generator, which use Grunt with a uh, Mustache here means it's it's official. It's officially written by the Yeoman team. So this has most stars, most number of stars. And here you also have React full stack and Angular full stack. I've used this before. It use MongoDB Express, Angular JS, and Node, which is a good stack. And it has all the server and client code uh, generated for you. So, Gulp Angular is also one of the most popular ones. Uh, Gulp Web App Ionic. Ionic is a framework. Maybe we'll talk about it a, a, few, a few more weeks later. Yeah, a few more weeks. So we'll have another meetup talking about Ionic soon. So it also have many many other generators, AmberJS. So anyone still has problems generating the the uh, Gulf Angular project. So everyone is okay. So we'll move on. Um, 
we have all the files ready here. After uh, running the yo gulp angular command. So here's the gulp file. This is the 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 file that gulp will use to check what task it, it can do. So there are some useful commands for Yeoman. Let's try. First we have Yo help. Yo help uh, is like a normal help. It has the usage options, but uh, other than that, we it shows the available generators. So Gulp Angular is one of it. For some generators like Angular Full Stack, inside the generator you can generate some modules for it, like a controller and uh, factories. So this is your help. And your doctor, in case you have problem with Yo, it doesn't generate things for you. You can run your doctor and it checks, uh, it shows you what the problem is and it tells you how to solve it. It's unbelievably useful. It's more useful than the Windows, Windows uh, check problems for you thing. But this is really useful. This really helps. The Windows one sucks. It, it just <laughs> ne never never resolve the issue for you. So when you have problem with your man, run your doctor. And yo for everything. In case you don't want to remember any command, you have yo and then it let you choose what generator you want to run, and you can update your generator, install a generator, find some help, get me out of there. So, and yo yo, it basically generates a yeoman for you. So, let's back to our main business, we, we have just generated a web app. To run that web app, we need to run the command go serve. So what gulp serve does is that it runs, it is a task that runs other tasks, set up the, the files for you, which uh, and also watch the files for uh, for changes. So in case you change the HTML, it can immediately reflect in the in the in the web you you will be viewing. So it hasn't finished yet. It may take some time. So it will have a local server running your website. Yeah, here we go. So it's a local server on pod 3000, which is a working website, which you can directly edit it and yes this is what you want it is a working website so uh, too bad this doesn't work um, this is a toaster so it has all the basic elements and File folder structure there, so maybe we'll take a look at what's inside.
So this is what Yeoman has generated for you. This is the source index.html and inside web is all the scripts. So in case we want to modify, modify something, so we'll show the power of gulp here, which is auto refreshing things in case uh, in this main.html here it says uh, here it says always a pressure scaffolding your apps and I add a not we save it and here it reloads it says always not a pressure scaffolding your apps so this may sound uh, doesn't sound very special to you, but this boosts your your productivity when you you can when it re auto refresh for you. And more than that, if you have coffee script, TypeScript, uh, SAS, which requires trigger compiling. When you modify the files, it automatically recompiles it and injects it into the website. So here, another example, we change the hello hello to hello world we save it and it becomes hello world so this is really useful when you are out of time so you and you don't want your F5 key to to, to, to break so anyone have anyone has problem Trying this. So, besides serve, we still have other tasks. For example, here we say build. So, usually, usually, uh, gulp files define serve and build. It is like a convention. So serve means create a local server, serve your own web. And build is create a, a production version of your web. So oh here is uh, the it shows what has changed in your when you run gulp serve this shows what's changed and it reloads it so other than gulp serve we want to know what, what task are uh, available we can run gulp tasks so there are many tasks available in this uh, gulp file and the structure of GALP, uh, how it works is like you define a task, it, it does certain things, and for a particular task, you want to call some subtask, which, for example, like clean. And so the hierarchy here is probably. Uh, meaning that build called the subtask HTML fonts and other. So this is the hierarchy. It shows what's what tasks are available. So we now want to build. In case you don't know what it means, you can always go back to the generator. 
it will always tell you how to use this generator. So it might uh, it might not be the same between different generators, but you can always look up the documentation. So here, for this Gulf Angular generator, you can see a certain, uh, a few Gulf tasks, which is meaningful, like Gulf Serve, Gulf Build, Gulf Test, Gulf Protract Protractor. So just run the task you need. So this time we want to run Gulf Build. So when you run gulp build, there will be a disk directory which uh, contains all the, the production version of your, of your web, which has all the scripts minified and concatenated. Because this is the most optimized way for, for production version of web page. You don't need multiple requests. You only need to download one file, and and things are minified inside. So here we can see the build has finished. We have a this directory here, in which there's a index.html scripts. But what's the difference for the Original uh, for the original scripts, this, you can see many files here. Uh, it is for maintainability and readability purpose. You don't want all scripts in one file, but for production version, you don't need that. You want the least file size, which increases the download, which will take less download time for your clients. So scripts are all, uh, are all minified here and concatenated for when the script, it means all the libraries concatenated and minified here. So we can take a look at it. Yes, here we go. This is the concatenated and minified version of all the libraries. And here add means the concatenated and minified version of the JavaScript that you write, not the libraries. So libraries here and your JavaScript files concatenated here. Also for styles, it's done the same way here. You can see uh, the libraries, CSS files, and your own CSS files. So when when your uh, web app is ready for distribution production, you can just type. Gulp, build, and everything is ready. You don't have to do all the minification and concatenation yourself. And for the images, some of the generators will automatically compress the images so such that uh, it will be faster for for your clients to, for your end users to download them, to view the website. So I'm not sure if this this one has done it for you. So this is basically uh, what 
gulp does. And that's also a default gulp task, which is defined, also defined in the gulp file. So for this project, when you type gulp and nothing else, it runs gulp build for you. So anyone has pro problems when you try out uh, gulp? We yeah, have already uh, explored the power of Yeoman and Gulp. And if you have time, you may also like to try out other generators. Something like Chrome extensions. So if you want to learn a particular technology, you may want to uh, generate a project and try just modify it and get it work. So with Yeoman, you can uh, learn the best practices and, and 
it. You don't have to start everything from scratch. So now I never write anything from scratch after I, I've discovered Roman. So you don't want to waste your time. You, you want to sleep more. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, we have a newcomer here. It's called Branch. I haven't looked into it yet, but it is a competitor to Grunt and Gao. So, you may want to check it out when you have time, but it may not have as many generators as Yeoman has. So, uh, Pili is not here today. Originally, he is, he is responsible for the grunt part. He will share his experience with grunt. So, what's the main difference between grunt and Gao? Is that you have this messy grunt code on the left and the neat gulp code, code on the right. But grunt really has more plugins than gulp because gulp is newer. So, but usually you don't have to write the grunt file and gulp file yourself. It is always generated by Yeoman. But in case you want to modify it, it's not hard. Uh, for, for both sides, it's not hard. It's intuitive. So uh, you have clean. What do you want to clean? So it's, you want, originally it cleans build app.js, build by build.js. So we will just modify the name and, and it will work. Also for the right hand side, uh, it's also intuitive. So gout.solve source, this one, pipe sas, pipe destination, pipe minify CSS. So it's intuitive. It means you get this file, you run it through this function sas, which means converting it from SAS to normal CSS. You put it inside and you minify it. And you rename it .min.css and you output it here. So it's intuitive. So when you want to modify it, it shouldn't be hard. It's just normal JavaScript syntax. So if you know the basics, it shouldn't be hard. So any questions about runs and stuff? So yeah, it's a QA and a time. If you have a problem having things run, running in your computer, or you have problems about your man, runs and gal, or problems about me, feel free to put up your hand and ask. Problems? Yeah. 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 Yeah.